representing a fisherman's wife. Um, we were preaching here a hundred years ago is the same message we're preaching today because Jesus is alive today. Thank you very much Mr. I mean I know I'm in receipt of my army pension as of this month but I'm, I'm sorry <laughs> I'll take exception to that. My name is Edith Cavill and I've become a matron. I went to Brussels to help Dr. Antoine Depage train Belgian ladies to become nurses. The First World War broke out. I was actually at home weeding my mother's garden on holiday and I immediately went back to Brussels saying to my mother that they would need me now more than ever. And it wasn't long before I became involved in sheltering Allied soldiers. Myself and Philippe were shot by firing squad on the 12th of October 1915. <laughs>100 years ago, on the carousel, is the Philip Mumry's got a copy of the East Coast of Queen of the East Coast Watering. So there we were, looking forward to life, and then the war happened. We've read about all the politics in the press, but all of a sudden, with the shooting in the Balkans, the world was turned upside down and we were at war. Your country needs you. McCulloch in cock today! Read all about it! What are you talking to me? I'll be, gone, I'll be gone, sir, because it's a pressing matter upon my mind, sir, but I must talk to you. But it may be pressing to you, sir. To me, it is not a matter I wish to discuss. Do you know who I am? I know who you are, I work for you. And you won't even pay a living wage. If you should be working, you should be working now, not abusing me in the street. To talk about the quality of my food. My food is feeding our troops from India to Ceylon, and from France to the Netherlands. Move away. I will not. I said move away. I will not. This is your final job. Move! No, sir. No! You saw him. He gave me no opportunity. I say, you sir, what? You are Archibald McConaughey, is that correct? I am. You are charged that on the 17th of November you assaulted Daniel Brown, causing him actual bodily harm. How do you feel? Not guilty. The verdict of this court is that you are found guilty of this assault. Take it away. This is a. Amelia has again another long train with a selection of fish 
and a lovely headdress with a similar design. And at this stage, I would like to thank Taylor, who has been instrumental in bringing the whole project together. That's lovely. If perhaps we could have a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks, girls. I know not. Death in forest does not cry. You are a skull now, white bleached by the rain, round which the weasel lightly leaves its train. You are the ploughed earth on which horses stand. You are the grain which once did crown the land. You are the bread the farmer once did eat. You are the strength when peace returns to greet. Men of both sides died. Women lost their husbands, their brothers, their fiancés and children their fathers. We pray that we may live in peace. Overseas there came and bleeding, and the nation in distress, and we gave our glorious lives for a battle to no Crashed, he was killed. 19 years old. Yes. So my wife and I visited his grave in Shams in the search for stories so she could bring him up to during the First World War. Now he'd, been, he'd come up coast, he'd bombed Yorkshire, and they'd sometimes come down the coastline to go back over the east coast. Now, at 618, he was east of Lowestoft. And that's where he got anti-aircraft far from pom-poms and the 12-pounder naval guns that were at the north end here at, at Lowestoft. So there's a lot of blazing going on. Now, at that sort of time, 6.18 in the morning. People used to get up at that time of the morning all those years ago. People are on the streets, on the way to work, and suddenly they hear all this blazing going on. They hear the drone of a Zeppelin, and they look up, and they see aircraft, and they're in hot pursuit. Now, you've got to imagine, the maximum speed of a Zeppelin is about 70 miles an hour. This thing's belting away at about 60. It's ditched all its bombs, and it's trying to get away, but it's already been pierced by some anti-aircraft shells and some other aircraft. So it's, it's gradually slowing down and it's coming down. So it hasn't got the altitude so our little flies can get round the big elephant. And they are hammering this. But remember, it's not the highest high speed pursuit. So, <laughs> with our little boys climbing as fast as fast as they can in their BE-2C aircraft. One of them was Egbert Cadbury, who's one of my personal heroes. My name's Simon Baker, I'm from Lowestoft Aviation Society uh, and basically what we've got here to, today is a stand that um, shows pictures of the raid damage uh, that was inflicted on Lowestoft in 1915 and 1916, uh, images of Zeppelin raids. This particular property, 46 Denmark Road, uh, this is a, a shot inside the, the bedroom showing the damage that was caused uh, in that Zeppelin raid on April 16th, 1915. Uh, this particular property uh, now, now is Catwick Way. So now you can still see properties on uh, Denmark Road are uh, up towards that sort of the eastern end. So we think 46 would have been towards the end of, of this block opposite the, uh, the, the, the train station. And as you travel along... You can make those. You can make those. That's the, uh, this is an interesting one because you can... Uh, that there is actually a, a converted railway carriage mm -hmm. and it's actually being used as a ticket office. The railway station is just out of the picture there and this building was only recently knocked down. That area there is now the, uh, the new large car park. 
Now I'm um, Ivan Bunn, search room assistant at Lowestoft Record Office, part of the Suffolk Record Office um, consortium. Uh, this is a little um, part of the display that we have at the moment commemorating Lowestoft in 1914. This here is one of the very first sailors from Lowestoft to um, die in the First World War. This particular bit shows the changes that occurred after war was declared in the town. Up in the record office itself we have other boards showing what everyday life was like before um, war was declared. Details of some of the very first fishing vessels to be sunk um, from Lowestoft um, in September and November. Um, on this board we're commemorating the fact that on the 15th of October um, 1914, 1,700 Belgian refugees arrived in Lowestoft. And now we have Mr Neil's story. Neil is a commander, a lieutenant commander in the Royal Mail Navy Air Service. Their job is to patrol off the coast and to observe enemy shipping and to engage them. And now we have Sarah as Lady Rose Bates Netherwood, as a name. She's an older grand arm, rather like Violet Crawley, Dowager Counter Countess of Grantham in Downton Abbey. She hasn't got much time for suffragettes or free thinkers. A woman's place is in the home, and free time is spent doing good works and minding everyone else's business. She was presented at court in 1875, and her opinions, tastes, and dress sense probably are never going to quite catch up. For the second one I've chosen, another one from Wilfred Owen, is one of the most moving poems I've ever read. First time I read it, it brought a tear to my eye. It's called Disabled. He sat in a wheeled chair, waiting for dark, and shivered in his ghastly suit of grey, legless, shown short at elbow. Through the park, voices of boys rang saddening like a hymn, voices of play and pleasure after day, till gathering sleep had mothered them from him. About this time, town used to swing so gay when glow lamps Living Archive. 18 months ago we put in a heritage lottery bid to try and bring history alive in a new format, in a digital format. As part of that project we were working with sixth form college students and we asked them what particular area of history they would be interested in looking at as part of the project. And it was agreed that because so many fishermen had lost their lives out of Lowestoft that the students would like to commemorate them in some way. So. I'd like to begin by introducing a local fisherman who is going to say a few brief words about those men. This is Keith Mayer. Thank you, Keith. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, children. It's an honour for me to be standing here to commemorate the lobster of fish in the World War I. So it's a fitting tribute to the lobster of fish in the World War I to be remembered by this memorial plaque. And in future generations, young people will probably be able to see this and say, Lowestoft was once steeped in its fishing history and its heritage. And that the brave Lowestoft fishermen of World War I, and indeed other fishermen, went to war to try to free our country and make it a safer place. Thank you. Thank you. I would now like to introduce Trudy Jackson, who is going to give us a short service. In August 1914, 
war was declared on Germany in Lowestoft, a town of seafaring folk. The hardy fishermen heard that call. From young boys, barely in their teens, to grey-haired grandfathers, they all stood forth to serve their country. They were ordinary men who did extraordinary things. Today we remember them, both those who survived and those who died. We will remember them. We will remember them. Keith will now read a poem about the Lost of Fishman. O oh Lord, be with us when we sail. Defend the right, put up the sword, and through the world to make peace. Across the troubled tide of life, thy self our pilot be, until we reach that better land, the land that knows no sea. To thee the Father, thee the Son, whom earth and sky adore, and spirit moving on the deep, be praised for evermore. Our next reading is from Psalm 107. Some went down to the sea in ships, doing business on the mighty waters. They reeled and staggered like drunkards and were at their wits' end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out from their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad because they had quiet, and he brought them to their desired haven. Amen. Almighty God, bless we beseech you, those who served and those who serve in the Royal Naval Reserve. Grant them your grace that, as in times past, they may be found ready to fulfil their duty and to set forward your will at all times. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will remember them. We, we will, will remember, remember them. them. Thank you. Now, the two young ladies here are key members in the project. And now Harriet is going to do the honours of unveiling the plaque for us. I would like now, please, to direct your attention to the unveiling of the plaques. Thank you. Thank you, Harriet. We now have a short video with a piece of music on it created by another of our significant members of our project, Emma Connolly, who I see is also here today and I'm very pleased to see her. When Britain declared war on Germany in August 1914, the German Navy immediately set out into the North Sea, intending to attack the British fishing fleets and destroy them. Thank you. And could I just ask for a round of applause for all the young people who are involved who are here today and who are here Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Thank you. I would now like to introduce Leo Woodstock, for who is the National Secretary for the Royal Naval Patrol Service. Thank you ever so much. Good afternoon everybody. I hope you've had a great day because it's been wonderful weather and I'm sure that uh, up and down the high street and around the town there's been some events going on which were unmissable and I think uh, they all deserve a very very big round of applause. So please. Now we've got this up and running Let's make sure we keep it going. Thank you very much. I've just got a few final thanks to say. There's so many people who've been willing to share their memories. 
thank you to you all and thank you all for coming and to help us remember these issues. Thank you.